at about 125 pages, this book, Reading Moses, Seeing Jesus, provides a cogent and lucid argument that followers of Jesus are not bound by the law of Torah. In other words, neither the Ten Commandments nor the 613 laws. Because in large part, the Torah anticipated that even Israel could not keep the law, but also that the law came after the faith-based Abraham covenant. And also that Torah itself was pointing towards the Messiah as the sole solution to the broken image introduced by Adam that whole time. So this book is co-authored by three people, Seth Postel, Eaton Barr, and Erez Soref. They're all Messianic Jews. The book is published by Lexham Press. And the book presents the argument that Torah does not expect the law to solve anything, but instead leads its audience to anticipate and then subsequently to follow the Messiah. Let's break down the chapters. In the first chapter, the authors demonstrate that there was a pattern starting with Adam and extending to Israel that anticipated law breaking. As with Adam, so with Israel. In the second chapter, the authors demonstrate that the law introduces death in the narrative of Torah, so that prior to the giving of the law in the narrative, God overlooked Israel's ignorant behaviors, but afterwards, death came swiftly. In the third chapter, the authors demonstrate that the solution to the problem is not the law, but rather the Messiah. The Torah points to the solution. It is the Messiah, the seed of the woman. In the fourth chapter, the authors demonstrate that the creation mandate of Torah itself anticipates messianic fulfillment as the culmination of God's blessing of and dominion over humanity. In the fifth chapter, the authors demonstrate that the Messiah fulfills Israel's function who was supposed to fulfill Adam's. In the sixth chapter, the author demonstrates how the Messiah is the solution to the fall being the seed of the woman. In the seventh chapter, the authors demonstrate how the Messiah is to come from Judah being the heir of Judah. In the eighth chapter, the authors demonstrate how the Messiah is to come out of Egypt to fulfill Adam. And this is foretold through the mischievous Balaam, sorcerer prophet. In the ninth chapter, the authors demonstrate how Torah has six functions at minimum. We're talking tutor, shadow, theology, love, wisdom, and even prosecution. Torah is scripture. Therefore, it is beneficial even if its 613 laws are non-binding. In the 10th chapter, the authors demonstrate that the 613 laws found in Torah were addressing a specific time, a specific place, a specific context, and they were mere concessions and compromises. In other words, these laws were never meant to be permanent. In the 11th chapter, the authors demonstrate that it is, in fact, absolutely impossible for modern Jews to obey and fulfill the law. For example, in the absence of a sacrificial system, which ceased in AD 70 with the destruction of the Second Temple, there is simply no way to perform the ceremonial Day of Atonement. That's important because that's what resets Israel's sins. Even if there was a temple, even if there was a sacrificial system, the Talmud points out that at about the year AD 30, which is the year that Jesus died and rose again, roughly speaking. At that time, there was a red fabric in the temple that would mystically transform and change from red to white, signifying the temporary purification of sins on the Day of Atonement. Well, it stopped working. That year, it stopped changing colors, and this really deeply troubled the priests. It appeared that the Day of Atonement was no longer working. In other words, that the covenant, the Sinai covenant with Israel was no longer in effect. 
In the 12th chapter, the authors demonstrate that modern Messianic Jews have their ancestry in Abraham, but their faith in the Messiah. It is one thing to be of Jewish ethnicity. It is another to follow the Messiah. Now, in the conclusion to the book, the authors challenge their audience not to follow the law, but rather to follow the Messiah. It is all well and good to contemplate on the law, but it's important not to stop there. Since the end of the law, that is its goal, which means its fulfillment, is the Messiah. The Messiah bids us all to follow him. Now, I found this book to be riveting and sprightly, finishing it in just two days. It's only 125-ish pages. I also found it to be well-structured, uh, well-reasoned. It had plenty of examples. It was really well thought. I also found the argu argument to be lucid, transparent, solid. And for these reasons, I was able to overlook a few typographical printing errors. In short, I enjoyed this book. I would recommend others to read it who are interested in the topic of the Christian Hebrew Roots movement. But you tell me, what did you think of this book? Have you read it? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, go get your merch. You've got the Jesus is Lord hat here in Greek that you can get or get something else. Christmas is coming. Be ready. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.